Hello my friends and welcome back to the rabbit hole. Today's video is going to be about the most popular K-beauty sunscreens. That's right, I asked you all if you were interested in this video or my favorites and you all said both. So let's go ahead and do both. I'm excited about this video. As usual, I'm combining some of the best sellers on Amazon, on YesStyle, with the top ranking on Huawei, which is an app that ranks Korean bestsellers. Actually, in the country of Korea, where it turns out things are pretty different. It's this video might surprise you. It surprises me. And as always, if you want to jump around, timestamps and links are in the description box below. And also, my skin type is dry, acne prone, and a little bit sensitive. Are you ready to get into the video? I had quite a list of sunscreens up for consideration in today's video, and I just kept coming back to one that I felt like it had to be the starting place for today's video. It's one that you've heard of. If you're watching this video today, you've heard of this one. And it's none other than the Beauty of Joseon Relief Sun Rice and Probiotics SPF 50 Plus PA4 Plus. I don't know if it's just me, but I kind of feel like this sunscreen took the internet by storm. This right here is currently the number one bestseller on YesStyle. I don't know if YesStyle ranks by your own country or not, but number one on YesStyle, one of the bestsellers on Amazon, and all over YouTube, all over TikTok, all over Instagram, for good reason. For very good reason. This is an excellent sunscreen. You know, Beauty of Joseon isn't a brand new brand, but I guess they had an idea a couple of years ago to take fragrance out of their products to just kind of do a lot of reformulating, keep their prices really low. And that's the story for this sunscreen as well. It is fragrance free, it is essential oil free, it has soothing ingredients, and it is absolutely lovely to use, you know, especially for those of us in the West who are stuck with these outdated filters. Oh my goodness, using this sunscreen in comparison to Western sunscreens, it's day and night. This is just a gorgeous product that feels like a moisturizer and yet gives you SPF 50 plus PA4 plus protection. And I feel like with all the hype and the buzz around this sunscreen, I would not be at all surprised if this right here was a lot of people's first K-beauty sunscreen, and I wouldn't be surprised if it changed a lot of people's perspectives on sunscreen entirely. It can, it can be this beautiful. As I was making my list for this video, I, I have all these notes under these sunscreens, right? What differentiates them. And I just kind of have a big blank section under this. <laughs> because at this point, while it's a great sunscreen, while it deserves the hype, I do kind of feel like I'm not sure anymore as to what differentiates this. As somebody who has now tried a lot of K-Beauty sunscreens, I now feel like I've lost the ability to describe what makes this different. It's very, it's very middle of the road. And yet there's some irony in here because I think that's exactly why this is such a popular sunscreen. It's perfectly in the middle. This is something I've talked a lot about on this channel. I really feel a lot of brands aim for the middle in terms of a dry versus oily skin type spectrum, in terms of a preference spectrum, because if you aim for the middle, you are gonna get the greatest number of people who like your product. But I also feel the problem with aiming for the middle is that fewer people are going to say that is ultimately their holy grail product. So for as much hype as this had, and for as great of a sunscreen as it is, I wouldn't ultimately be surprised if a lot of people do like this, but find something that they end up liking a bit more. Because yes, truth be told, that did happen to me. And truth be told, this sunscreen, it's not on the Huawei app. <laughs> when I tell you I looked through the list of sunscreens, multiple times, multiple times, the denial that I have been in over here going, how can this be such a popular sunscreen, but not in the top 100 sunscreens in Korea? A Korean sunscreen that is globally popular, but not that big of a deal in Korea. It is mind blowing. But you know, that is exactly what I've heard. I've heard Beauty of Joseon is very popular online and yet not as popular within Korea. 
Let me know if you're in Korea. Feel free to confirm this. Is Beauty of Joseon an online brand more so than an in-store in Korea brand? Let me know. And let's move on to our second sunscreen, which is number one on Huawei and is number one on Amazon as well. You've probably heard of it. You've probably heard of it. The Madagascar Centella Hyalusica Water Fit Sunscreen from Skin 1004. This one, I feel like this one took the world by storm, and I will tell you why. When this came out, the Beauty of Joseon one was very popular, but this came out and it immediately was an alternative to Beauty of Joseon because it's different from Beauty of Joseon's. This one feels much lighter to apply. Again, on that scale of preferences, I think if you have a more oily skin type, I think you will gravitate towards this more, but I don't think it just depends on skin type. I think it can depend on preference as well. You know, you can have a dry skin type, but not like the feel of moisturizer or sunscreen, and if that is you, you too will probably gravitate to the Skin 1004 over the Beauty of Joseon. It's lighter. Their whole goal in making this was for it to feel like water, hence the name Water Fit. And it too checks those boxes of being fragrance-free, essential oil-free, non-irritating, it is a really good alternative to Beauty of Joseon, wherein I suspect a lot of people might prefer this to Beauty of Joseon. In fact, in all truth, I do too. Yup, with my dry skin type, I still prefer this because I don't like looking too glowy and bizarrely, bizarrely it's a fine line even on my dry skin. I think it's just because of my skincare routine though. A skincare routine can give you glass skin on its own, and then sunscreen can make that glass skin even glassier. And that's why I like this. In all truth though, I don't actually love the pump system on this. I feel like that slows me down ever so slightly. It's not enough for me to not love this sunscreen, I do, but I would prefer it to just be in a squeeze too, just to be honest with you there. Still, it's a wonderful sunscreen and I fully understand why it is number one. My third sunscreen for today's video is the Round Lab Birch sunscreen, which actually does not come in English. And yet, this is a brand, this is an entire brand that is very popular in Korea. More recently, it has been gaining popularity worldwide. So it is currently number three on Huawei. I had to double check that, it was number two, and then it changed, now it's number three. Beauty of Joseon is just such a good sunscreen to compare others to, and the difference between the Beauty of Joseon sunscreen and the Round Lab sunscreen is that this one feels much more moisturizing. So if you are someone with a dry skin type like myself, if you try these two, you might find that you gravitate a little more to the Round Lab sunscreen. And again, I don't think we should limit our conversations to skin type because you may have oily skin, but maybe your skin feels dry in the winter. This could be a perfect winter sunscreen. Because what is interesting about this is that even though it feels very moisturizing, it doesn't look too dewy or glowy on your skin. I've talked a little about this before, but sometimes these very deeply moisturizing moisturizers can look a little matte, surprisingly. I feel the same about this. In fact, I've even said this is one of those sunscreens where I don't feel you need a separate moisturizer with this, which is great if you're trying to speed up time in the morning, but you've got dry skin, what do you do? Well, you could reach for a deeply moisturizing sunscreen, which is exactly what this Round Lab sunscreen is. This one does have some essential oil ingredients, but I have to say, Aside from them being overall the less irritating forms, I don't smell them. I don't really smell much of anything in this sunscreen. I don't have a very finely tuned nose, so some people might smell it more than others, but worth mentioning, they are in here. As a person with dry and sensitive skin, I will tell you right now, this is my favorite sunscreen in this video because I do like that added nourishing, moisturizing feel. But in all truth, there is something I don't love about this. It's kind of hard to get good deals on this. And that might have to do with importing this. Maybe it's a lot more affordable in Korea, but yeah, it's a little bit more expensive than most of the other options in this video. However, I do think for some people it could be worth it. But I want to take a big moment to pause right here because we need to talk about something. Some of you smarty pants might even know what I'm about to say here. So 
we need to talk about the similarities between those three sunscreens. And I think the best way to do that is to once again, put the ingredients of those three up on the screen. Let's take a quick look here. Do you notice some similarities? Do you see how these are all using the exact same filters? The first ingredients on these are very, very similar. Do you know why? I've seen some people say all three of these sunscreens are the same, and that's, that's not quite true. You saw the differences. I figure it's kind of like if somebody was to tell you that you and your sister are the same, would you be offended? I don't have a sister, but if somebody told me I was the same as my brother, I would definitely give them this look. See, what's going on here is all three of these, to my knowledge, are made by the same manufacturer. So what happens is these companies go to specialized sunscreen manufacturers because, as we've talked about a lot, sunscreen is hard to make. But you've got these manufacturers that will make sunscreens for other companies. All you have to do as a brand is go to them and say what you want. So maybe Beauty of Joseon went to Colmar and said, we want something fragrance free. We want, how about some rice? And Round Lab went to them and they said, well, we're doing a birch sunscreen. This is our moisturizing line. We want some birch juice, make it more moisturizing. And that's how you end up with, actually the sisters analogy is pretty, is pretty spot on. These are kind of sisters but they're all a little different too. I admit I'm not sure what to tell you now that I've told you that because I've noticed that people react a little differently to finding out this is how this works. It's not exclusive to Korea or Korean sunscreens. We have this happening in the West as well. I think that, I think the real bottom line, the real take home from knowing about this is this is why you don't need to buy every last skincare product out there. <laughs> buy the one that fits your skin type the best. You know, if you're someone watching this thinking, wait, I use the Beauty of Joseon one, but I do have a drier skin type. Should I buy the Round Lab? Well, maybe, but don't feel like you have to stop using your Beauty of Joseon. It's a great sunscreen. Maybe when you run low on that, you might want to check out the Round Lab next. Wait for a deal. <laughs> And if any of you know where to find the best deals on Round Lab, I'm all ears. But yeah, you know, they're different, but they're similar. This is, this is dupes. <laughs> How about we talk next about a sunscreen that actually does have a different formula? Let's talk about this Eccentree Hyaluronic Acid Watery Sun Gel. This is an Amazon bestseller, as well as number three on YesStyle, underneath Beauty of Joseon and Skin 1004. And what is very interesting about this is that this is actually a different formula. This even has some of the old school filters that we do have in the West, although not exclusively those. This one, at least. <laughs> With this having a different base formula, it actually does feel different. And I think some people might really appreciate that. It gives you a much more dewy and glowy look, which is actually what I don't love about it for reasons I've already given in this very video. It's a, it's a bit too glowy for me. I feel like I look a bit reflective. But you know, everybody has different experiences and if those base ingredients in the Colmar formula don't work out for you, this one might work for you. Or it might be inverted. In fact, I've seen a lot of people say that this one stings their eyes whereas Colmar's formula doesn't. This one also has a little bit more of that sunscreen smell to it, which I think simply is those older filters. So for me personally, this one is still a very good sunscreen. It's one that I absolutely rank as an A sunscreen, but it's just not, it's not my personal favorite. In my final sunscreen for this video, I did want to include a mineral option. So I'm going with the sunscreen that is number five in Korea right now, the Toradin Divin Mild Sun Cream. Yes, this is a zinc oxide sunscreen. Now, technically it does have a booster in it, so you wouldn't necessarily be wrong to view this more as kind of a hybrid sunscreen. And in all truth, I have to say, as somebody who at one point thought that I couldn't use anything other than mineral sunscreens, this is a good option. It doesn't feel too drying. It doesn't leave too much of a white cast on my skin tone. I'll make sure to always say that. I'm not sure this will work for deeper skin tones. But in terms of comparing this to Western mineral sunscreens, 
This is good and it's actually SPF 50 plus PA4 plus. We almost never have SPF 50 plus mineral sunscreens over here and you know we don't get disclosure on UVA protection. So I do have to say I think it's a great option. I don't think it'll probably get as popular globally because again we do have access to zinc sunscreens in the US. That is an approved filter over here. But yes, I was very surprised to see this is number five on the Huahe list, it's a good option. And my friends, that's it. Those are my thoughts on the most popular Korean sunscreens. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Do we like the hat? I never can tell with bucket hats. I mean, it goes with my outfit. How do you not wear it, right? You know this was a gift with purchase from Ulta, but also of course it was. <laughs> anyway, that's it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe. I hope you all have a wonderful week and I will see you all next time.